Casting Artificial Granite Version 3.0, The Ancient Way Before we begin, let go of everything in your head that belongs to the 21st century. We have no cement mixer, no drill mixer bit, no vibration to shake out bubbles, etc. Oh, and we don't have a scale either. From this point on, we're cavemen. Pay close attention to what I'm not doing, and don't do those things either, because they're pointless and harmful. We're going to cast a quote-unquote huge stone inside a plastic cup. Ingredients, water glass, sand, or any other type of crushed stone like granite. And a pinch of slaked lime, 2%, used only as a catalyst. Step 1, The Spirit Test. If your water glass doesn't start to gel from a sip of whiskey or other strong spirit, stop right there, you won't be able to make stone with it. Step 2, for beginners, I recommend measuring out, say, 100 grams of sand or granite grit and 2 grams of slake lime so you can keep the 2% ratio. I don't use a scale anymore, and I'll show you why. Here are two piles of 100 grams of silica sand, and in the smaller back cups, 1 to 1 gram of slaked lime. I'm not touching the sand on the left, it's only there for comparison. But look at what happens when I mix the first gram of lime into the sand on the right, and then the second one. This 2% catalyst visibly stains the sand, turning it white. That's why I don't use a scale anymore, I add slaked lime until it clearly changes the color. That's roughly 2%. I'll show the same with this horribly colored ground granite, yeah, it's not Aswan granite, sadly, but at least I can get it. The lime visibly lightens this too. Now for the basalt flower. This one's tricky, it didn't change color at all. That's because it's a 21st century ultra-fine powder, the 2 grams of lime simply disappear in it. We'll see later how this modern wonder behaves. The fourth contender is this nice lemon yellow desert sand I bought at a pet store. It's usually used in terrariums under reptiles, but we're going to cast stone from it. And yes, the 2% lime turns this beautifully white as well. So here are the four candidates for stone casting, silica sand, granite grit, basalt powder, and desert sand. In the next step, we're not measuring out the water glass, remember, we don't have a scale. Instead, grab your mold, which in my case is a plastic pudding cup, and pour in about 1 cm of water glass. It must be undiluted, in fact, I usually boil mine down to make it even thicker. Into this roughly 1 cm layer of water glass, I start spooning in the dry, catalyzed mix. Watch how it clumps instantly. That's caused by sudden surface dehydration and gelling. Our job is to break up those clumps, if it were a large stone, we'd stomp them apart. It's crucial that all this is done below the surface of the liquid. That's the secret to producing a bubble-free stone, just like natural rock. Working underwater forces the bubbles upward to escape. So all I do is spoon it in, then crush the clumps. I repeat this as long as I can work under the liquid level. Once I can't, I pour in more water glass and continue. See? I'm not mixing it at all. Mixing bunches up the slaked lime, forming white lumps that separate out, and that ruins the whole act. When the submerged fill reaches the height of the neighboring stone in the quote-unquote wall, we stop. Now what? What do we do with the excess water glass? We can't tip a 10-ton stone out of the wall to pour it off, obviously. And we're not going to cheat with the plastic cup either. So. We come up with a brilliant idea, poke a hole somewhere low on the mold and trust that the liquid doesn't need instructions, it'll simply flow out. On real ancient stones, those nubs may have been shaped so the liquid could drip off into a bucket instead of running down the wall. After all, it's still water glass, perfect for the next stone mold. As you can see, with this technique the nubs are basically optional. Either I fill the water glass all the way, or I drain the excess. That's why this Inca wall doesn't scare me either, some spots have nubs, others don't. Now I'll repeat the process with the other three candidates. Here's the granite.
Here's the basalt. And finally the desert sand. For days later they had shrunk enough to pop right out of the plastic cups. They turned out gorgeous. During the first few days the material is still easy to carve, I hollowed out the granite style cast with a teaspoon. The basalt one came out low quality, but that was expected. The desert sand version, though, is awesome. In the first few days you can even cut the material with a knife. Which reminds me of that sarcophagus. Can you imagine this on a massive scale? I definitely can. Cast a stone of your own and you'll see the ancient world differently forever. So how exactly did the Incas haul that enormous, solid stone up to the top of Machu Picchu? You already know the answer. In buckets. <laughs>